I'm very happy to be here to share our practice in Italy and um, to share the practice all, uh, in all Europe. Uh, and uh, we know that uh, several European countries uh, have different uh, laws. Uh, some laws are um, specific for uh, learning disabilities, or other laws are, are not. And uh, in uh, 2000, uh, Bogdanovic made um, a survey to look what happens in Europe in different uh, countries. And more recently, Enrico Guidoni uh, from Italy made a survey by the EDA, the European Dyslexia Association, to understand what is uh, the situation, uh, updated situation in, uh, in Europe. And uh, here you, you find the countries from which we collect the info. And uh, mm, we have no time now to go in detail in, uh, in this survey, but uh, a specific law for learning disabilities is present only in five, uh, about uh, um, 13 countries uh, at uh, the time of this survey. And we know that uh, uh, the European Commission is one of our target, the European Dyslexia Association as the target of European uh, Commission education, and we invited uh, uh, the um, education uh, um, coordinator to our conference that will be held uh, in, in Modena. And uh, he, he, he make a response to our invitation and uh, saying that uh, education ministers of all EU, EU member states have committed in this framework to reduce the number of low achievers in reading, mathematics, and science to below 15% by 2020. And they invite us to join the uh, project, the European project, that can give us the money also to, to make uh, conferences, to share practice. In uh, our country, in Italy, uh, Italian Dyslexia Association was born in 1997. And uh, uh, it was the time uh, to, to start uh, to make uh, um, a strong fight uh, in, uh, in the schools, uh, but also in the, um, in the health um, apparatus, because uh, in Italy now we have uh, the possibility to, uh, to give uh, the right measures and the compensatory measures at the school only if uh, the child has a certification from the clinicians, from uh, child neuropsychiatrists, from psychologists, but we have a problem because we have to train not only teachers but also the clinicians to be aware about dyslexia, what is dyslexia, how is possible to make a diagnosis. But in Italy, uh, in 2004, 11 years ago, the um, education ministry um, write the first document to all the schools, to all teachers. We have no special classes in Italy. So the inclusion is uh, our uh, useful, uh, usual uh, approach to learning disabilities for everybody, for uh, every kind of, uh, of disability. And in this first document, 2004, uh, you cannot read, but I, I say that uh, there are all the special measures and the compensatory uh, educational uh, tools that teacher can use. But it was not enough. And uh, for this reason, the Italian Dyslexia Association fight uh, very much uh, during the years uh, to get uh, a law, a national law, the 107, in 2010. The law has established uh, equal opportunities for pupils and students with learning disabilities. And uh, the, um, the law give a definition what is dyslexia, what is dyscalculia, what is dysgraphia, what is dysorthography. And uh, um, to start from one point, but we know that uh, also for, from the clinical point of view, it is not uh, always easy to make the same diagnosis uh, between uh, two different clinicians. We have to, uh, to, um, to make consensus about the criteria, the diagnostic criteria. But this is a very good point of view. 
the law protects the right to education from primary school to university. All the school and all university is, uh, um, um, is protected by this, this law. And uh, the, the, the law defines the right of the students to benefit from the special measures and the compensatory educational flexibility. We state the, the same things uh, in 2004, but it was very difficult to have uh, a, a real uh, application in everyday practice at school. And uh, the ministry uh, state uh, all the, um, um, the guidelines in this document, but the problem is that uh, most uh, teachers have never read the guidelines. But also the, the, the clinicians on the other side. So we have to, to spread uh, reading also among not reading disabled people. Because teachers have no dyslexia, but do not read too much the documents that give the opportunity to understand what is the sense of such measures. We note that in the clinical, in the clinical debate, uh, um, the clinician use uh, different uh, cutoff for deciding, uh, for making a decision and to making a diagnosis. And so in Italy, we make in 2010 a consensus conference for all Italian clinicians, child neuropsychiatrists, psychologists, speech therapists, all the specialists that has to make the diagnosis, to make a consensus about what is important to share, because uh, it is really difficult for um, a single child to be uh, assessed by two different uh, specialists uh, and uh, getting to different conclusions. This is a very, um, it is equivocal, and is equivocal for the parents, is equivocal also for the teachers, because uh, in sometimes we, we find that pupils uh, and students uh, having and not having diagnosis, uh, only changing the clinician. So it is very important to to work on this. And the Italian Dyslexia Association was the promoting of this consensus for the clinical point of view. And the diagnosis has to be made to um, get the teacher in the right condition to write uh, a didactic plan, personalized didactic plan. So our guidelines in Italy give the clinician a guideline to make the diagnosis for teacher use, for everyday use, because the problem is that uh, clinicians use uh, very difficult uh, words and the teacher do not understand, uh, and our fight is to make clear what is the problem of the single child. Is uh, very slow reading, he has problem with attention, he has problem with vocabulary and so on. Anyway, uh, this is a survey made in Italy some years ago. Um, very high number of uh, pupils. Uh, two on three children with dyslexia were not, were not uh, recognized by the teachers in the classroom. And uh, the law has a protocol for the identification of children at risk, starting from kindergarten and in the primary school, the first two years, all the teachers of all Italy should detect children uh, experiencing difficulties in learning to read, writing, and, uh, and calculating. But it is uh, uh, an ideal, because in, in Italy now, only three regions um, have the protocols. The protocols uh, start from the single region, not from Rome, not from the center. So the center give all the region, make the protocols. Uh, the protocols are very easy to be used, the uh, um, schedule, um, giving the, the teacher 
the, the, um, the task they are to assess. Look at the reading proficiency. Is it uh, rapid or is it is, is fast or is it slow? Is the, um, the accuracy is good or not? The writing is a high speed or low? And give the right way to make uh, um, treatment for that aspect. And the, the, the indication is very clear in the protocol. The problem is that only three regions on 21 regions now has the protocols active to make early identification and uh, intervention before saying to the parents, uh, I think that uh, your child has to be assessed by the clinician. So this is the response to intervention approach. When I detect a uh, difficulty, I make an intervention. After the intervention, I check again the child. If the child is uh, again in difficulty, I give the uh, indication to go to the specialist for the diagnosis. But uh, our law has uh, a definition for dyslexia. Dyslexia is uh, a problem with uh, reading speed and or accuracy. But the law says uh, our knowledge is changing and if you look at the DSM-5, the classification of specific learning disorder is more, is higher than dyslexia is reading problem. Because here you find the reading comprehension problems, difficulties in mathematical reasoning, not dyscalculia as we, we can uh, uh, define uh, the problem with the number sense uh, or uh, directly with the calculation and arithmetic facts. So it is very is a, a wider definition of, of the children that are uh, experiencing difficulties at the school. And so the approach that we are trying to make uh, um, available for everyday practice is that dyslexia is uh, uh, one of uh, the neurodevelopmental disorders and that neurodevelopmental disorders uh, are more frequently comorbid. They are together in the same child. And in many uh, practical situations, we find a good diagnosis. The child has dyslexia, but the clinician do not test for language, do not test for uh, attention deficit disorder, do not uh, assess for developmental coordination disorder. <laughs> and the child uh, has a diagnosis, uh, has the, the right measures uh, for the reading problem, but the success at school is not uh, uh, guaranteed because uh, we have not checked for other aspects. Uh, all. Uh, these uh, neurodevelopmental disorders uh, start from the same, from the same root, that is the neuronal migration. In our early development, uh, our brain is uh, is growing, is growing uh, by this uh, complex process, that is the migration. All the neurons migrate to the final destination. And this process is the process that uh, in uh, dyslexia and in all neurodevelopmental disorders has some problem. So the organization and the migration is not uh, optimal so that you cannot read as well as appear and you cannot use the language and you cannot use the attention or the coordination as you can uh, be attended for your, for your age. And uh, um, only a few words about the language problems. The naming difficulties. Uh, it is very difficult for me to say what is that. The, the, the child is looking at the volcano and after many seconds says uh, it is a tornado. It is a paraphasia. 
is one word for another word, but in the same semantic category. This is a very frequent problem for children that has dyslexia because many dyslexics start from a language disorder. And uh, uh, pupils with uh, dyslexia do not read or read less than peers. And the effect is the Matthew effect. Rich become richer and poor become poorer. So you have a reading problem, you read less, your vocabulary go down, and then when your teacher asks you to say what uh, does this uh, passage uh, mean, the child has understood the, the, the passage but has not the words to make uh, uh, a good uh, um, task during the examination. So if we are not aware of language problems, for many children, the measures are not enough because you can read the passage to the child, but the child has a problem for the output of uh, his examination. ADHD also, many problems come from this aspect. Not every child with ADHD has really ADHD. We have the pseudo ADHD. A child with many different problems at school has a, 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 a lose the, the power during, uh, during the lesson, during the hours, uh, more than the, the peers because uh, he exposed to a much more uh, uh, difficult environment. So not all children with the uh, ADHD symptoms has really a diagnosis of ADHD. But one more underdiagnosed uh, in Italy uh, is uh, developmental coordination disorders. Uh, the children that are not able to make, uh, to, to play an instrument, like I don't know in English, flauto, but uh, <laughs> if you have a uh, problems with coordination and when you, 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 you make this, you make also this movement and uh, all your concentration is uh, on your fingers but your body turn, uh, it's not easy to make uh, this uh, task while reading the notes, the music on the paper. But also for this, we have uh, many children not diagnosed and experience uh, many problems at school, also for motor education. For children, is a very uh, big problem to, to make this, uh, um, these tasks. So uh, our ministry in 2012 enlarged the the field of application of uh, special measures, uh, special educational needs, and all the children now are included. Uh, and all the teachers should uh, be educated about uh, dyslexia, language disorders, ADHD, developmental coordination disorders, autism, intellectual disabilities, so it is not uh, easy, it's not easy, but we know that this is the way and that we start in, to, uh, in 2012 with this document from our ministry. And the approach is the ICF approach, the new conceptualization of disability, health condition in an unfavorable environment that can be applied to many of these conditions one of the neurodiversity paradigm is the, the, the left-handed. It was impossible for a child to, to use the left hand to write in Italy until not, not, not many years ago. Now it's incredible. We think that it's impossible to, to mind that uh, a left-handed cannot use the left hand but it is the same for other conditions, this one. 
only one minute and I conclude. The way to write, uh, this is our task for reading speed assessment. Write uh, the numbers with uh, letters as fast as you can. I give you one minute. This child, in one minute, 62 graphemes with the block. With the cursive, 30. The school and the, the teacher, uh, the, the child was obliged to use only the course because the cursive is the main way to write. Is this child a disabled child or a disabled child in this conceptualization? Because changing the way of writing, the reading speed was twofold. And so it was possible for him to manage all school activities only using the right way for him. So I think that the approach is to be changed, uh, to be aware that uh, the environment can be really the cause of problems for many neurodiversity aspects that are evident in all the classrooms. The problem is that the politician says to help us to make, this is our Renzi, Renzi minister, that to make a reform of instruction. We hope that uh, also Tsipras could help you they're to make a good they're reform. They're the best friends. Okay. <laughs> so uh, thank you very much.